have. Michael. Thanks, Anne. Hi, Ange. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I usually start with team news, but obviously specifically a really bad injury to Ivan Perisic this week. Yeah, um, disappointing. Uh, firstly, for, for Ivan more than anything else. Um, you know, just one of those innocuous things that'll happen sometimes. Um, you know, he obviously uh, got a pretty significant injury from um, from training. And uh, as I said, disappointed for him because, I mean, I've only worked with him for a little while, but you, you can see why. Yeah, he's played at some of the biggest clubs in the world and why he's maintained such a level of performance for so many years. Uh, he's the ultimate pro in the way he trains, the way he presents himself. Um, and it's it's disappointing for us as well because you know, he's been a real important part of sort of what we've done um, so far. He's, we don't have a great experience in the group and he's one that, you know, does have that, um, you know, level head and he's been pretty significant in all our games so far in, in big moments. So um, I said, first, disappointed for him, disappointed for us um, in terms of, you know, what we're trying to build. Uh, but, you know, he's, as I said at the start, he's, he's very strong-willed and I've got no doubt he'll, he'll come back and, and you know, for club and country and uh, get back to the levels uh, he showed before getting injured. Huge game Sunday and you've been involved in so many derby matches in your time, most recently Celtic and Rangers. Over the last few months, obviously, locally, Cock Foster's, Hadley Wood, you've bumped into Spurs fans and maybe even Arsenal fans have told you just how big a game this is for both sets of fans. Yeah, no, it's fair to say, um, you know, people have sort of um, given me an indication of how they feel about this game and that's that's great. I mean, it's, um, as you said, I've, I've, you know, I've been involved in, uh, you know, derbies um, and one very significant one and... You understand what it means to supporters for, for both clubs and, and kind of the significance um, in terms of the general mood around the place. So all these kind of things, um, you know, um, add, add, add significance to, to the fixture and also the fact that, you know, they're, they're a very, very good football side. Um, you know, they had an outstanding season last year. They've, I think they've strengthened this year. Um, you know, they're a group that's, for the most part, has grown together and you can see that, you know, there's a real belief within them. So... Uh, you know, playing him at their place is, is going to be a hell of a challenge for us. There was a lovely moment at the fans forum at the very end when there's a young lad got, got his uh, question answered. Um, he got a lot of attention on social media and rightly so. You're even getting Arsenal fans saying on social media, I hate Spurs, but I really like Ange. Um, it's been a great few months. I know this is just one game, but I just want to get your view on how assessing you've, how you've been in the first few months in England and how much you've enjoyed it. Yeah, look, I, I I've enjoyed it because you know I've enjoyed I enjoy what I do and um, you know it's just I'm just you know I'm just trying to be who I have been my whole life and um, you know with with the forum it was just a, a young man who was don't ask a question mate that's so uh, that's why we were there and I didn't think one extra question was going to be uh, um, you know anything. Uh, to uh, significant to anyone else but to that young man so felt right to do it and um, did it and that's that's fine I mean I don't think um, you know there's a famous college uh, coach who once said you know never be proud about doing the right thing just do it so it's um, you know there's always life lessons for all of us no matter how old you are about the way we conduct ourselves but uh, I've enjoyed so far it's been a great challenge and many challenges to come um, you know, I, I said, uh, yeah, you know, I've got I've got a group of coaches that I, I talk to on a regular basis from other codes, and uh, a couple of them going through a difficult period, and we all decided that, you know, as a coach, you're either going through a difficult period or it's coming up. So that's your constant uh, way of being. But I, I enjoy it. Mate. Thank you. Hi, Ange. Good afternoon. Hey. For some Spurs players, it will be the first time experiencing the North London derby, especially away. What do you think would be the key for them to maintain their focus and perform in what's going to be a very challenging atmosphere? Yeah, I think uh, you're right. You know, we're going to have quite a few that um, you know probably haven't played in this fixture, and, and like I said, away from home. And, and and it's not just that it's a derby and it's away from home. It's the the, the challenge of overcoming a really you know, strong opponent as well, you know, irrespective of that. Um, you know, Arsenal are a very, very good football side. and uh, um, But again, I think with these things, as, as much as you want to talk about them, it's the experience that, that makes you grow. And, um, 
you know, I've always felt that in these kind of fixtures that, you know, you, you allow the players to go out there and hopefully try and get them to, you know, express themselves in, in the best possible way and, and not put too many sort of, um, you know, restrictions around or, or, or try and guide them too much as to what to expect and, and how to react to it. It, it. It's much better they go through the experience and then you can sort of reflect on it. That doesn't mean that you can't offer advice. And, and, and like I said, from our perspective, we've tried to create an environment here where every day we, we train really hard every day, preparing for a really difficult game at the end of the week. And, um, you know, hopefully that kind of constant day-to-day um, conditioning of the boys in terms of their, their physical being, their mental being, means that every week they feel like it's a big game so that when they do you know, get into a, a game of more significance from a public perspective like this one, hopefully it doesn't change them too much. After Arsenal managed to complete a double against Spurs last year, how important do you think this one specifically is for the Spurs fan to get a positive result at the Emirates? Yeah, look, I, you know, again, with, with I guess the supporters, yeah, but it's, it's, you know, any time, I think irrespective of your past record, they, they always see the next derby as the one that they want to win and that doesn't change. Um, um, and from our perspective, like I said, it's it's a great challenge for us um, as a football sort of team that's beginning on a journey and trying to have an identity in terms of the way we play and... There's no greater test than playing one of the top teams in the competition away from home who also happens to be your biggest sort of rival. So it's a great, great test for us, great challenge for us. And um, that's what we've got to go, go out there and try and um, see how we cope with all of that. In terms of recovery and preparation, the fact you're not playing in Europe, Arsenal played Wednesday night, gives you some kind of advantage this weekend? Yeah. Um, I don't know how... Them playing in Champions League and us obviously not playing Champions League because we weren't good enough last year gives us an advantage. I think the advantage is usually with a team that's in the Champions League because they've earned the right to be there. So, um, no, I, I, I don't think it gives us any advantage whatsoever. Um, you know, and in many respects, that's who that's the space we want to be in. You know, we would have much preferred to have a Champions League uh, game this week as preparation for a derby rather than not a game. So, but again, all these kind of things, um, yeah, you, you, you go into games and you adjust your preparation. Um, you know, I'm sure Mikel has f- with his team and will adjust for the fact that we didn't have a game, you know, a top-level game midweek to, to prepare for this one. Ian, take. Hi, Ange, how are you? I'm good, mate. Um, Arsenal, Spurs haven't won at Arsenal for 13 years, but not many of your players that will play on Sunday will have that kind of baggage in inverted commas with them. How much of a help is that, that they're going into this game without having had years and years of not having success in this fixture? Well, I don't know. I mean, it, again, it, it really depends on, on sort of how you frame that. Uh, ultimately, the challenge is that they're a very good football team and that, I can't get away from that. They, they're, they're, they're a very, very good football team. So irrespective of past records, you know, even if we... You know, if we had beaten them twice last year, I'd be going into this game going, it's going to be a tough game. And it will be a tough game for, for our players and, and particularly away from home. So there's that's the challenge for us. And I, I've never put too much stock on previous sort of records or previous history because ultimately, you know, I certainly wasn't involved in any of those. As you said, some of the players weren't involved in any of those. So there's no point us reflecting on 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 sort of a historical context of the fixture, what's really more relevant is, well, they're in good form, we're in good form, we want to go out there and try and sort of play our football against them. You've been heralded this year for playing on the front foot, Spurs fans saying they got their club back and the football is so much more entertaining than in the past few years. Can you play that sort of football in this game, in, in, a, in a derby match of this magnitude? Well, there's no reason. There's no other reason that we play this football than to to be successful. So if I didn't think we were going to be successful, I wouldn't play it against any opposition. So, um, you know, from my perspective, I've I've often said that you know, I don't set up my teams um, to play football. It's just nice to watch. I put, set up my teams to play football to win, and um, you have to believe in that against all opposition, against in all kind of circumstances. So there's always tweaks that happen because of the opposition will, will, will force you to adjust certain parts of your game. But the underlying principles of the kind of team we want to be, no, I'm not going to 
I'm not going to shy away from it now just because um, we're facing a good team. We, we have to you know, go out there and challenge ourselves to play the football we have so far against, a, against one of the teams that will be challenging for the title. And, and finally, one of the talking points around the opposition on Sunday is the goalkeeper. They started off with one goalkeeper, they brought in another goalkeeper. How difficult, as a coach, can you explain how difficult that is to have two goalkeepers of who both see themselves as number ones? You very firmly had Joe Hart as number one at Celtic. Your goalkeeper you bought this summer is very firmly your number one at the moment. How difficult is it, or, or do you see it as not being a problem at all? I think the most difficult is when you don't have a number one. That's when you're really struggling. I reckon having two good number ones, I don't think any managers would say no to that. So, uh, no, I think uh, I think they're all, I think they're in a good position. Charlie, I just wondered how important the psychology is for the players for this kind of fixture, and with that in mind, if there are things you've been trying to tap into this week and in the next couple of days. No, again, as I said, I think. I, I, you don't downplay the significance of the game um, because even if I tried to, there's enough noise around it to, for the players. You know, they don't live in bubbles to know that it's a big game and what the significance of it. Um, but you know, as I keep saying, we train every day. That is, you know, that that there's a there's going to be a preparation for us to play our best game of the year this weekend. And once we do that, then there'll be a preparation to play our best game of the, you know, of the year the following weekend. That has to be the mentality, and I've tried to instill that into every group I've had, is that you train every day to be the best you can be. That means you're preparing yourself for your best game of the season this coming weekend. Um, but it's not like you treat it, you know, when people say you treat it like every other game. Well, yes, you do, because every other game we want to win, and we have to be at our best, particularly in the Premier League, to do that. So the noise around it is, and the significance around it is, is, is something that we have to um, embrace and, and absorb. But, you know, I'm not going to... I'm not going to be happy if we're more up for this game and less up for another game because I know that's not going to get us to where we want to go. Mm. You mentioned before about having you speaking to coaches from other codes and that sort of thing. Could you just expand on that and the sort of things that you talk to with them? Yeah, just like I said, I mean, I think I've said before, I'm the kind of guy who's pretty curious and you know, I've got a little group that we, we kind of get together once a month and uh, nothing significant, just sort of a safe space for us to to whine and moan about our existence and... Um, mm. Everyone feels good at the end of it, mate. It's a bit of therapy, but um, yeah, no, it's all good. And just lastly, on team news, Lo Celso, is he available? Is there any other difference? No, in terms of, um, like, apart from Ivan, everyone else from sort of last week's in good space. Um, um, but in terms of the longer term ones, we've still got, uh, they're still probably two or three weeks away. Um, Brian Gill, um, Lo Celso, um, Benton Core, um, those kind of guys. Um, Hopefully, over the next few weeks, they'll they'll sort of slowly get involved with training. Hi, Ange. Um, there's so much change going on at the club right now. It's not obviously just you and on the pitch. You've got Scott Mann officially signed this week, director of football coming in, uh, Leonardo Gabonini leaving the club. What's that like to be inside a club that's changing so much all at once? Um, normal for me. Uh, when I've, wherever I've gone, it's kind of... And, and, and I think that's that's the club understanding. As a, You know, I've constantly said that if you want to change you need to change and you know all these things happen you know sometimes not sequential or not at the same time but over the course of time you find that you know we're we're heading off in a new direction and and some of the people make their own decisions about you know whether they're involved with that other times we 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 look for new people or the club looks for new people to to bring in and I think that's um that's the kind of uh, position we are as a club and as I've said it wasn't going to take one window for us to sort of build the squad we want and it wasn't going to take you know just a couple of months for us to have the structure we want it's it's something that I think will evolve over the next probably 12 months a couple of years I think you'll find there'll be some you know constant evolution of you know um, people and the way we play and, and the way we train and the environment itself I think that's um, and you know all these kind of things I think are just uh, a natural consequence of the club deciding to, to change direction at the end of last year. Talking about the future, I went to watch the under-21s this week and saw Alejo <coughs> release getting his first minutes for the club. Obviously, very much looks like a player that's going to fit your system. 
what have you made of him in training so far? And do you still feel your original thought that you're probably not going to see him getting minutes until the second half of the season? Yeah, no. Um, he's uh, to be fair to him, he's only had sort of one week training with us. Um, we had two sessions sort of last week, and then we sort of gave him some game time in the twenty ones, as you said, and uh, and now he's sort of had a full week of training. And um, great to have him on board. Um, you know, again, no expectations around his contribution. Obviously, um, you know, being in attacking third, I think he'll, he'll get some opportunities for for some game time. But we still got to let him settle a little bit and. and get involved in training sort of more consistently over the next two, two, three weeks, maybe getting a game or two more in the in the 21s because he's, he's missed a lot of football. But we've been really encouraged with the way he's gone about things, the way he's um, adjusted to life here. He's only a young man sort of coming from the other side of the world. Um, you know, the dressing room environment's great. And, you know, watching him the other night, he's, you know, showing the attributes. He's, you know, he's got great movement. He's, he's a real sort of... Yeah, number nine in terms of the way he he he, he attacks the box, and uh, really looking forward to getting him up to speed. Last one for me. There's another big game for you this weekend. Carlton playing tomorrow morning. Are you going to get up and watch that? And how much are you looking forward to that? Absolutely, mate. Uh, go the Blues. Um, it's uh, it's uh, they've had a great year, and um, we've we've had a lot of time without success. Um, so um, so yeah. So uh, good luck to 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 the Blues, Mickey, Michael Voss, and and Cripsy and the boys. I don't want to be a section, James, please. Hi, Ange. Um, no one knows what I was talking about there. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks, mate. <laughs> Go on. Um, you, you've made such a good start in moving on from, from Harry Kane leaving, but he, he is the all-time top goal scorer in North London Derby. He's 14 goals in 19 games. Is this maybe a game where there's a risk of feeling that void a bit more than in the past? No, I think you, there's a risk of filling that void right from the start. I mean, you know, that's that's the reality of it. As you said, it's it's not, it's it's a fairly significant figure um, on and off the field. To be fair, that 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 you know, left very late in the piece. But we kind of try to, you know, as a collective um, focus on on kind of the road ahead and the kind of team we want to be. And I've really been pleased with the way that. You know, all the lads have sort of tackled the task of us being a real attacking threat um, from all areas of, of our game um, and and so that people sort of don't see sort of a glaring gap there. Um, but, you know, it's it's still, uh, you're still trying to replace arguably the greatest player this club's ever had who, who still was making a very, very significant contribution. So, but I think the the... the the opportunity for, for the void to be there is there all the time, but we've we've managed that well so far. And, you, and obviously, you've already beaten Manchester United. Do you, do you, so, do you feel you've got the personalities to, to to step up in these big games, or are you sort of still learning that? I guess. Well, we'll learn that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, it's it's not a. I mean, we're five games in. I mean, um, you know, I, I understand that. You know, for many people, this will, you know, they'll see this as our first real test, and you know, I get that, and. What eh, it's pretty easy to kind of you know you can almost write two stories now if we're successful great we're on the right track if we're not you know when we're, we've still got a long way to go but for me what's going to be more important is if how much of our football I see in a, in a big game like this you know how much of us can I see against a you know a top opponent and and that'll give me the the the, the biggest indicator as to where we're at but ultimately we'll still be six games into a new a new cycle, you know, a new group of players, a very young group of players. Um, and, you know, either way, um, irrespective of the outcome, I said the performance will be my, my biggest measure, but knowing that we've still got a long way to go. Thank you. Okay, we'll end the broadcast.